In this video, we're going to complete example two. We're going to expand and simplify the following expressions. And you'll notice that it's getting a little tougher now because we've got two sets of brackets right next to each other. Now, previously, when we learned to expand, you'd only have one term to the left of the brackets and you would connect it with these little arcs. Let's imagine if the two was on its own, then we would have connected the two to the x and said we're multiplying x by 2 and we also would have multiplied the 2 by 3. But because we've got the set of brackets we're not only multiplying the 2 by the x and the 3 but we also need to multiply the x by the x and the 3. And if I start using the arcs this time it starts to look a bit messy and I like to avoid that. So what we're going to do is we're going to sort of split this into two sections. So first of all, we had an x in the set of brackets. And this x is going to be multiplied by both terms in the next set of brackets. We're multiplying it by the x as well as the 3. The next thing we had was a 2, which is a positive 2. So we'll write this as plus 2. And this also is being multiplied by x plus 3. So what you can see here is we've sort of split up the x and the 2 and put x plus 3 next to both terms. And the reason this is useful is in case you like to draw the little arcs, it's, it's not so messy. Okay, so what's x times x? Well, we get x squared and then x times 3 is 3x. So we're going to write plus 3x. Then positive 2 times x is 2x. So we'll write plus 2x. And then positive 2 times positive 3 is 6. So plus 6. And then we want to simplify this. Only the two terms in the middle can be simplified. 3x plus 2x is 5x. So we're going to write this as x squared plus 5x plus 6. And that's now in its most simplest form. Now there's also another method you can use which is called the FOIL method. And I'll show you that now. I'll write it down. FOIL. F-O-I-L. Now the FOIL method is great, but it doesn't always work. It's not going to work uh, with question C. Alright, so FOIL stands for first outer, inner, and last. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to complete question A again using the FOIL method. So, notice that I've got two sets of brackets here. According to FOIL, I focus on the first terms in each set of brackets. That means the x, because that's the first term in the first set of brackets, and the other x is also the first term in the second set of brackets. I'm going to multiply them. What's x times x? I get x squared. So that's the first thing. Using the FOIL method, we can see we have outer next. And outer basically means the outer terms, the x and the 3. See how they're both on the outside of my expression here. x times 3 will give me 3x. Next, we see we've got inner. So what do we mean by inner? We're talking about the inner terms, which are the 2 and the x. So when I look at my expression here, the 2 and the x are kind of in the middle. They're in the inner part of my expression. Now, 2 times x is 2x. So I'm going to write plus 2x. Now what do I do? Well, using the FOIL method, the last step is called last. And that just means the last term in each set of brackets here. So the 2 and the 3. They are the last term in each set of brackets. And 2 times 3 gives us 6. And you'll notice that when we use the FOIL method, we got the exact same result as the first method that I showed you. 
And this will, of course, simplify, just like it simplified before, to x squared plus 5x plus 6. So it's up to you which method you want to use, but you need to remember that the FOIL method does not always work. It, it's kind of like a shortcut that you can use, but it's extremely important, and I need to emphasize this. It's extremely important that you know uh, this method here because this is the only method you can use to expand question C. Okay, so we'll move on to question B. I'm only going to use this method here from now on in. I'm not going to use the FOIL method. So I'm going to split these two terms up. So I've got the 2a. And next to that 2a, I'm going to write the second set of brackets. I'm going to write 3a minus 4. And then the second term in my set of brackets is the plus 1. So I'm going to write that down, plus 1. And then my second set of brackets, 3a minus 4. And I'm going to multiply out my two sets of brackets. I'm going to expand them. So 2a times 3a, 2 times 3 is 6. And I had two a's there, so 6a squared. 2a times minus 4. Uh, 2 times 4 is 8, I need to put the minus there, 8, and I had an A. Okay, next, positive 1 times 3A, 1 times 3 is 3, so we're just going to get 3A or plus 3A. And then positive 1 times minus 4, 1 times 4 is 4, because of the minus I'm going to have minus 4. And once again, only the two middle terms will simplify. Negative 8a plus 3a is negative 5a. So I'm going to write this as 6a squared minus 5a minus 4. Now I've had a change of heart all of a sudden. I, I feel like I should show you the FOIL method just once more, just for question B. Like I said, it can't be used for question C anyway. So first step is first. What are the What's the first term in each set of brackets? It's the 2a, that's the first term in this set of brackets, and the 3a is the first term in that set of brackets. So 2a times 3a is 6a squared. Now I'm on to the outer, which just means the outer terms, which is the 2a and the minus 4. They're the outer terms in the whole expression. 2a times negative 4 is negative 8a, or minus 8a. And then we're told to do the inner part of the expression. So the inner parts of my expression are the 1 and the 3a. They are in the middle of my expression. 1 times 3a is 3a. So I'm going to write this as plus 3a. And then finally, I'm going to do the last step, which are the last two terms in each set of brackets, the 1 and the minus 4. 1 times minus 4 is minus 4. Okay, and we can see that we get the exact same result as we got when we used the original method. And if we were to simplify that, we would get the same thing as well. 6a squared minus 5a minus 4. I'm going to reiterate what I said. You are more than welcome to use the FOIL method, but you must be careful. It doesn't always work. All right, now we're moving on to question C, and I feel like I don't have enough room, so I'm just going to start with a blank slate. We'll write here question C so, that, so we know that that's what we're looking at now. And what we're going to do is we're going to split the a and the 4 into two parts. So I'm going to have a, and next to a, the second set of brackets, which was a squared plus 3a minus 2. And then the second part was plus 4. So I'm going to write that down, plus 4, and then I'm going to copy down the second set of brackets, a squared plus 3a minus 2. Close my brackets. Okay. So I'm going to multiply my a by a squared, by 3a, and also by minus 2. I'm going to do the same thing with the 4. I'm going to multiply it by a squared, 3a, and minus 2. 
All right. A times A squared will actually give me A to the power of 3. And then A times positive 3A, I've now got two A's. So I'm going to have positive 3A squared. And then A times negative 2 gives me minus 2A. Okay. Then I've got plus 4 here times A squared. Plus 4 times A squared is just plus 4A squared. And then uh, plus 4 times plus 3A. Two positives make a positive. So 4 times 3 is 12 plus 12A. And finally, plus 4 times minus 2. We've got a plus and a minus. 4 times 2 is 8. I'm going to write this as minus 8. Okay. Now I need to combine like terms. I can see I've got 3a squared and 4a squared. They're both positive. Uh, the a to the power of 3 is just going to stay the same. 3 plus 4 is 7. So I've got plus 7a squared. Now I'll look at the terms that only have 1a. So I've got negative 2a or minus 2a plus 12a. Minus 2 plus 12 is 10. So I'm going to have positive or plus 10a minus 8. Anyway, that concludes our video on example 2. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.